So you want to play modded Minecraft with your friends and in order to do that you want to know how to make a modded Minecraft server. Well you have found the perfect video for you. Now first things first I want to lay some things out here. The server that we start in this video is only up and running when your computer is up and running. It runs on your own network meaning you're going to need a good network connection and it runs on your own computer and modded Minecraft is really resource intensive so you're going to need a really good computer in order to run this server properly. On top of all this it is hosted on your own public IP address meaning anyone who gets the IP to this server can DDoS you. It basically means hit your internet offline and figure out where you live without your latitude and longitude coordinates. You also need to port forward and honestly it's nice to have a little bit of tech experience before getting into making a Minecraft server using this video. So what if you don't have a good computer? What if you don't have a good network connection? What if you want to have some privacy? You don't want anyone who connects to the server to know where you live and what if you just want the easiest and simplest way possible to start a modded Minecraft server? Well that's where our company Simple Game Hosting comes in. Go to the first link in the description down below the breakdown to xyz slash simple to start your very own minecraft server where all you've got to do is select forge or fabric the mod loader that you want and then add your mods it's super quick super easy and if you have any issues along the way we have expert live chat support and a high quality help center to help you out on top of all that if you're more of a mod pack player let's say you want to play all the mods you want to play better minecraft you want to play medieval mc or even sky factory any of the popular mod packs actually over a thousand of the popular mod packs you can install all of those with just one click at simple game hosting as well so go check out simple game hosting at the first link in the description down below the breakdown dot xyz slash simple to start your minecraft server without having to watch a 15 or 20 minute tutorial to do it but nevertheless, what if you do want to go ahead and create the server on your own computer? Well, let's dive on into it. First things first, you want to go to the second link in the description down below, and that's going to take you here. This is our in-depth forge guide. It is worth noting that anyone who joins your server will need to go through this guide and get forge because forge is required and all of the mods need to be installed locally as well as on the server in order for them to be able to join it. I will mention that about a thousand times in this video, so get ready. Once you're here though, go ahead and click on the download button here to be taken to forge's official download page. On this page, you want to make sure that 1.20.2 is selected in the left-hand side here, as you can see, 1.20 and then 1.20.2, and then we have this MC 1.20.2 here. If Download Recommended is available, click Installer under that. Otherwise, if you just have Download Latest, click Installer under that one. When you do, the download will begin. You may need to keep or save the file depending on your browser, but as long as Forge is in the title, you're 100% safe to do that. Now, with Forge downloaded, what we want to do is minimize our browser and go ahead and move it to our desktop. For me, it's going to be found in our Downloads folder, but you may have it wherever your downloads save. Once Forge is on your desktop, you want to go ahead and open it. So right click on Forge, click on Open With, click Java and click OK. But Nick, I don't have Java here. Well, if you don't have Java, you need to get Java 17. And it's required for Minecraft mods and servers. So it's definitely required for a modded Minecraft server. You've got to have Java 17. Luckily, we have an in-depth guide on it. It goes over everything you need to know to get Java 17 step by step. It covers it all. Once you've got Java 17, you may also need to run the jar fix. This is going to take all the jar files on your computer and link them back to Java, making them work happily together. So first, get Java 17, then run the jar fix, and then finally, you'll be able to go ahead and open up Forge here. So let's go ahead and do that by right-clicking on Forge, clicking Open With, clicking Java, and clicking OK. Now, in the Mod System Installer here, just go ahead and click on Install Client, click OK. That's installing Forge locally because, like I said, you need Forge installed in Minecraft in order to join your server. So go ahead and knock that out, get it out of the way. It should install. If it doesn't, go play Minecraft 1.20.2 Vanilla and make sure that both the Minecraft Launcher and Minecraft are closed. Then you'll be able to install this. Once that's done, click OK and Forge will close. Now, before we try to install the Forge server, we need to create a folder on our desktop. So right-click, create a new folder. You can title it whatever you want. I'm just going to title it Forge 1.20.2 Server. And then we want to go ahead and open up the Forge installer again with the exact same process. Right-click on it, click Open With, click Java, and click OK. Now this time, we want to click on Install Server. A red box will appear, perfectly normal. Click the three dots within that red box. That's going to open up this sort of file explorer type menu. Click on desktop, and then on your desktop, you'll have the Forge 1.20.2 server folder we created right there. So go ahead and click on that, and then click open. Now click OK, and it's going to go ahead, download, install, basically get Forge ready for Minecraft 1.20.2 on a server, right? It's installing all the server files for Forge right now. You can actually see them populating in the background. There's now stuff in that folder. Once it's finished, it'll say it's successful. Click OK, and now if we open up our folder, we have some files here, which is great. Now all we've got to do is double click on this run.bat file. It's going to attempt to start the server, but it's not going to, as you can see. 
failed, press AD key to continue. Go ahead and do that and it will close out of it. But we have a few more files and folders here. Specifically, we have this eula.txt file. Go ahead and open up the eula file and change eula equals false to eula equals true. T-R-U-E, exactly like that. And then click file, save. That is assuming you agree with the eula, which we do. And then we can double click the run.bat file again. I should have mentioned this earlier, and maybe some of you can help me out in the comments if they missed this part. But if you don't have a run.bat file, you just have two run files. On the right side, you're looking for the one that's a Windows batch file. You can also get the .bat file extension by going to view and clicking file name extensions there. Again, that was view, and then make sure file name extensions is checked. And there you go, you've got the .bat file back. Now, when you double click on this, your server is going to start. Now, only you can join the server at this moment, but I would recommend going ahead and doing that, making sure you can join, making sure things are working. So let's go ahead and open up Minecraft. Again, though, we want to make sure that we're opening Minecraft with Forge. Forge has to be installed locally, and you have to be playing Minecraft with Forge in order to join a modded server. Also, once we get to installing mods, any mods you add to the server also need to be installed with Forge locally. Sorry it's so complicated, but it's the downsides of modded Minecraft servers. Nevertheless, we have Forge here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, set the resolution so we can see better once we get in game, but we can then go ahead and click play. Once we do that, we'll have to click play again, confirming we're playing modded Minecraft, and then I'll show you how to join your newly created Minecraft server, which is now started, by the way. You're looking for done in the server console. Both of these are the server console. They're, they're literally just mirrored of each other. So... Yeah, keep that in mind. Nevertheless, as you can see, Minecraft is open. We are open with Forge as well. You can see Forge in the bottom left here. To join a server, you want to click on Multiplayer. Then, in this Multiplayer menu, you want to go ahead and click Add Server. You can name this whatever you want, but I'm going to name it Local Connection because you're the only one that can connect this, meaning it's local. For the server address, you're going to type in Local Host, right like so. Local Host, all one word, exactly like that, and click Done. And now we've got our simplegamehosting.com server, which by the way doesn't require port forwarding, which is what we're going to have to do to allow our friends to join. And we have local connection. That's the server that's locally on our computer here. If we double click on it, you'll see us join on in on the left hand side. There it is, joining right on in. Now with that out of the way and us knowing how to join it ourselves, we can see we're online, we can break blocks, all of that stuff. How do we allow our friends to join? Well, like I said, we're going to be port forwarding in order to do that. You don't have to port forward on Simple Game Hosting, and honestly, port forwarding is the most difficult part of starting a Minecraft server and allowing your friends to join it, right? This is the part that allow your friends to join. Right now, your friends cannot join. After port forwarding, they will be able to, and it is, unfortunately, the most difficult part. So let's go ahead and knock it out. We're going to make it as easy as possible. Let's do it. So first, go ahead, disconnect, close out of Minecraft, and stop your server. The way to properly stop your server is come over here in either one of these consoles. There's text boxes in both of them, and then type stop, right? Like so, just type stop, and then hit enter. And it's going to close the world properly, saving everything, and then you can press any key to close that, and there you go. Now let's go ahead and minimize that and close out of the server file. I'll say minimize them and just close out of the server directory here. And what we want to do is go ahead and open up command prompt. So I'm going to go ahead, come up here and type in CMD command prompt, right like so. And there it is. There's command prompt. Again, that was just searching for CMD and there's command prompt and opening it up. At this point, what we then want to do is in command prompt type IP CON FIG, IP config exactly like that and hit enter. Then we have some numbers here. We need two numbers. We need our IP pv4 address and our default gateway you could write these down on a piece of paper you could write them down in notepad in your on your computer which is what i'm going to do it really just depends on uh, what works best for you so our ipv4 address for me is 192.168.1.25 yours could be different and that's perfectly normal that's why we're getting this this way instead of me just saying to you what the numbers would be for our default gateway for me, I only have one default gateway, and that's 192.168.1.1. Yours may be completely different, and you may have one that's numbers and letters. If that's the case, you don't want it. You want the one that's under it. There'll be a blank over here on the left under default gateway, and then next to that, there'll be a default gateway that's just numbers. That's the one that you want to get in order to port forward for Minecraft, so go ahead and get the one that's just numbers. It'll be in the same format as mine, even if the numbers are different. We can now go ahead and close out a command prompt and we want to take this default gateway here and we want to go and open up a brand new tab in our browser. In this brand new tab up here at the top where you would normally type in simplegamehosting.com, thebreakdown.xyz, youtube.com, you want to paste in your default gateway. Then go ahead and hit enter and some sort of login box is going to pop up. It might look completely different from my login box and that's perfect. 
perfectly normal, but some sort of login box is going to pop up. What do you enter in here? Well, it's going to be different than your Wi-Fi password, for example. It's your router's username and password. Luckily, in the description down below, we have a complete guide on how to find your router's password. It goes over everything you need to know. Start with method one, go down to method five, which is unfortunately contacting your ISP. Luckily, most people find it by method three, definitely by method four. I would say probably 5% of people end up having to make that phone call to their ISP. Once you've got your router's username and password, though, what we want to do is come back over here and log in. So let me go ahead and do that. So here we are on our router. Now, my router probably looks completely different from yours, and that is perfectly okay. Don't stress about it. I'm going to be giving you the terms that you need in order to port forward your router. But we also have a guide in the description on how to port forward any router. It goes over the most popular routers out there and shows you how to port forward on each of them. Go check that out. And even if your router is not mentioned, it's still worth looking at because it covers all the most popular routers out there. And a lot of routers are very, very similar with their software. So 100% worth checking out and watching all of that. But I'm going to be giving you the common terms anyway. For example, a port forwarding might be in advanced. It might be in port forwarding. It might be in NAT forwarding, NAT forwarding. It might be in apps and gaming. It could be in the security tab. It could be in the networking tab. For me, it is in advanced. And then it could be in an advanced again like it is for me, and then it could be in port forwarding slash port triggering. It could be called single port forwarding. It could be called port triggering. It could be called NAT forwarding, NAT forwarding. It could be called NAT gaming, NAT gaming. Truthfully, there's a ton of different things that it could be, but overall, you're just looking for port forwarding, port forwarding slash port triggering, single port forwarding, and once you find it, you want to go ahead and add a new port forward. In my case, that's going to be add a custom service. Sometimes you'll just have a big drop down or a big list, excuse me, of empty boxes. Go with the first one if that's the case. But for me, it's add a new port forward, add a custom service. Now from there, you're going to have a name or an ID. What is this port forward for? It's just identifying what it's for. So for me, that's a forward server, right? Because that's what this is. We're making a forward server. For the protocol, you want to make sure UDP slash TCP is selected. TCP slash UDP, UDP slash TCP, or both. It literally may be the word both. If for whatever reason, you can't do this port forward with both of them selected. You wanna make sure you do it twice, once for TCP and once for UDP. Luckily, most people will be able to select both. For external port range, outside port range, for anything involving the word port, P-O-R-T, you wanna go ahead and change it to 25565. So for anything involving the word port, 25565 is what you're going to enter in. Now, as you can see, internal ports, hey, there's that word ports again. That's going to be 25565, right like so. Now, for our internal IP address, this is going to be that IPv4 address we got earlier. So 192.168.1.25. Now, in some cases, you want to have this option to enter in an IP address. Instead, you have a big list of drop-down box of all the devices connected to your network. Well, guess what? I have that as well, and we can actually find my computer over here. Right there it is, 192.168.1.25. 25, we can select it in that way as well. It doesn't matter which one you do, it has the same outcome. Now at this point, most people are done port forwarding. You can go ahead and save, you can apply, but some of you will have an external or outside IP address. Well, guess what? Everyone who's watching this needs their outside public IP address because that's how their friends, yours included, are going to join the server. So let's go ahead and find that. You can find the link in the description down below to our website where we show you your IP address. It just literally takes your IP and gives it back to you. And again, this is all hidden. If you start a server with simple game hosting, your friends get an IP from simple game hosting and they join it that way. But nevertheless, let's go ahead and copy this. You can just click to copy. You can see 4.3 here. That's just so you know we're using the same IP once we get into Minecraft. No trickery or anything like that. And then we can go back if you needed this for your port forward and enter it in here. Otherwise, we can now go ahead and minimize our browser and what we want to do is start our server open up the server directory and double click on that run windows batch file and it will start the server we also want to go ahead and open up minecraft with forge i'll meet you on the minecraft main menu once we've done that so here we are minecraft is open and our servers are started what we want to do is go ahead and click on multiplayer and then click add server now i'm going to go ahead and name this our public ip because we're going to be using our public ip to join this and we're going to paste this in here now again the only thing you can see here is dot four three that's just so you know it's the same ip we were using earlier 
And once you've got your IP pasted in there, go ahead and click done. Now, your friends have to join via your public IP. You don't. You could use the local connection we made earlier, and that would work just as well. But we're going to go ahead and join via our public IP. Now, I know this is going to work for me. For you, it might not work. And that's because some ISPs don't like to allow what we just did. The reason being is you're connecting back to yourself. And I'll be honest, that is a little bit weird and unusual. So it's not uncommon for that to be blocked by ISPs. Because if you're connecting to yourself, you should probably just use localhost. And that is why that can sometimes be blocked. So as long as your friends can join via your public IP, that's all that matters. But you might still have some issues. And if that's the case, you might need to allow Java through your Windows Defender firewall. This is what you'll need to do in order to allow Java through Windows Defender and allow your friends to join. It can also be blocked by a firewall or an antivirus on your computer. But generally, it's Windows Defender and this guide shows you how to fix it. You may also have to fix your server because it's broken and we have an in-depth guide on fixing a broken Minecraft server. It's literally 20 minutes of me just troubleshooting different Minecraft server issues. So it's kind of uh, boring in a way, but it's great if you're a server admin and you want to make sure you understand everything that's going on and how to fix it all. Last but not least, you probably want to add mods to your server. Well, we have an in-depth guide on doing exactly that that covers downloading mods, making sure they're the correct version, all of that stuff, and that's linked in the description down below. So go check that out. It covers everything about adding mods to your server, making sure they're installed. Generally, you just add them to your mod folder, but you want to make sure that they're the correct versions. Sometimes you'll need to reset worlds, different things like that. So it is important to make sure that when adding them to your mods folder here, you do the rest of it correctly. You'll also need to install them locally and every single person, every single person who joins your server will need to install those mods locally as well. So keep that in mind. They've got to be on the server and they've got to be locally in Minecraft. But nonetheless, that's how you can make a Minecraft server with mods in 1.20.2. If you've got any questions, let us know in the comment section down below and be sure to give you a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.